So on this episode of Moments with Murph, we're going to talk about types of friends that you do need. And we're going to hop straight into it. So first, we're going to start with the adventurer. They're the ones that's like, hey, let's go sky- skydiving. Yeah, I know it's 10 p.m. at night, but let's go ahead and do it. We're going to do it in the middle of the Amazon. We're going to pass through all these trees. We're going to land on this boat in this small river. And you're like, what? Huh? Bro, what? Like, you're kind of confused. But, you know, it, they might not be that extreme, but they just might be. Because they have this, this giddy up in them. Like, they're ready to go do stuff. They want to go move around. Like, they're just, they're eager. And there's nothing wrong with that at all. Like, they're the ones who really, you know, pull you out of that comfort zone. Like, they want you to experience new things. Because some of us have similar habits, common habits, consistently. And it's, it's kind of hard to break it. Because, like, you know, maybe you're used to drinking Henny on a Saturday with friends consistently right that's just something you commonly do you don't want to go nowhere you don't want to do too much and you might be one of the people who are on a budget and that bottle that you split with your friends and you just have a good laugh there's nothing wrong with it but maybe you find somebody who says hey let's go take a walk through a national park you know let's go do something different so it's like they're giving you the opportunity that's still in your your means they're staying within your budget and you just see something different because like if you guys ever taken a walk through a national park, it's so fun. Like, long trails. That might scare some of y'all. It might scare some of y'all. But remember, get your steps up. Get your steps up. But long trails, trees around. Sometimes they're broken. It actually looks like a beautiful site. You know, nice river bays sometimes. You can see a waterfall sometimes. Maybe you're in a high mountain and you get to look over where a freeway is. Ah, there's so many different, like, sceneries. Find you a trail. But they're the ones to make you do something a little different, you know? Maybe you, you're you used to staying at home with your pool. So you feel like you got all the comfort you need. You don't really want to do too much. You're like, well, I'm pretty set. And I like swimming. And I got a pool here. So why am I leaving? You know, they're the ones that get you out of your comfort zone. You know, maybe you guys take a walk through East Cleveland. Or the south side of Inglewood. Or East Atlanta. Or south side of Chicago. Like, you know, some real colorful cities. They get you to see something different that you might not have been... <laughs> you might not have been exposed to. And you're kind of like, wow, okay. This is this is different. This is, um... This is something I... <sighs> yeah, okay. You know, <laughs> only thing is, you know, if you want to go back there again... But the whole idea is the adventure is going to be able to pull you out of that that real, you know, your comfort zone. And that's, that's really what you want to do. You want to try something different, you know. They're the ones who have you try different foods. Maybe you're just used to eating chicken or eating, you know, seasonless macaroni, you know. And then they give you something different. And you're like, wow, never would have knew, you know. Never heard of this Caribbean food. Never heard of this Jamaican food. But now you have. They're allowing you to... Do something different, and you kind of get to you get to learn something about yourself. Because like, if you do something once and you don't like it, well, then you know you don't like it. But if you've never done it before, then how do you know if you do or do not like it? So the adventurer is great for helping you express and learn something new. Leading into those people, you got the people who work out, and this can be them. Hey, let's get up at 6 a.m., run five miles, do a thousand push-ups, do a thousand sit-ups, do 500 burpees and then that's just the pre-workout to get you ready for the workout and you're kind of like what what I'm, I'm sorry what we're going to do that's, no no now again they might not be this extreme but they could be <laughs> and the whole thing with the, the workout partner or the workout friends like they're the ones who want to get you in shape if you are not in shape and that's on both ends. You can be very, you know, obese or you can be very skinny. But there's that middle area where you can be considered healthy. And that's what the workout partner wants to do. They want to make sure that you are maintaining a good weight, that you're eating right, and that you're eating the right things. Because some people think just because they eat, you know, bread here and they eat some vegetables and they eat fruit. And they eat a lot of, you know, protein. But they'll overdo it. Like, no. This means you eat right. That doesn't mean eat right away and often. That means eat when you're supposed to and eat when you're supposed to eat the right things. That's that's the issue. 
But the workout person, they really care about your health. Like they want to see you in the best possible condition because a lot of them understand the effects of having a poor health. And one of the things you always want to do is make sure you take care of your body. You only got one body. Why waste it? <clears throat> so they always want to make sure that you're in shape, that you're doing the right things, that you are, you know, you're moving around. You want to stay, you want to stay moving. Because a lot of, like, a lot of my friends, they, they like to be very immobile. Like, why are you laying on the couch with, you know, some haagen Like, get up. And I've got the one ice cream. It's, I, I think it's a gelato or something, but like if you look at it, you would think it's hair care products. And I remember when the first time I seen my cousin eating that, I'm like, why are you eating hair gel? Like, what are you doing? No, this is ice cream. No, that is that was clearly on the shelf. Like, why? Are, you know, it's just like, <laughs> it's little things that kind of confuse you. But the workout person, they understand the importance of health and they're going to beat it into your head. They're going to make sure that you understand that, hey, what you're doing is unacceptable. Get up. Let's get moving. Let's do something, you know, fun. You could say it might be, it might not be fun to you, but after you start working out, you like, you know what? This, this is fun. You know, you get to improve your body. You look good. You feel good. And guess what? Then you're gonna, you know, do more outside of just working out. You like now you're up. You know, you're not sleeping till 12 p.m. like some of y'all do, and now you're getting up at seven and eight. You're like, man, I ain't got a workout in. I'm, I'm energized. I can really maximize my day. Like, think about it. If you can put, let's say, 16, 17 hours to work of, like, not just, like, work, work, but, you know, doing something effective and productive versus sleeping about 12 to 13 hours. Like, if your sleep time is equivalent to your productive time as far as being awake, there's an issue there. There's really a problem. But again, you know, this is what the workout partner is for. And isn't it fun, like, if you enjoy working out and you have somebody to do it with you? Like, it's, I know it's kind of hard for some of us to find people that want to work out and that does it consistently and correctly. Because some people, they just really waste your time. And you kind of just kind of kick them to the side. So overall, they want to make sure that, you know, that your health is in good condition and they're also there to help motivate you and compete with you. Because, again, those who compete to make each other better often grow together. Remember that. Yeah, that sounded good, didn't it? I know, I know, I know. So, next, we have the dreamer. And the dreamers are the entrepreneurs. So, these are the ones who, you know, have these big goals of really being independent, financially free. They want to own their own business. You know, they really want to them shots in the dark. And some people, no lie, they say every not, no. Yeah, only one in 10 businesses succeed. Okay, that means 90% of people fail. But they, those who actually go about the situation correctly, they're the ones to succeed or at least be able to, you know, navigate through the trenches. But again, like, they're the ones who have these big goals and they're not going to let anyone stop them. The good thing about them, too, is the way that they look at money. They have you look at money in a completely another way, where it's like, you don't see money as just something you spend it on. You're like, it's like, oh, okay, this money that I have that's in a bank that's on me, nothing. I can put it to work and have it actually earn me something. And if I ever decide to take it out, then I take what I made off the money and keep my money. Wow, this is amazing. You know, they're the ones who help you illustrate life a little different. And they're the ones who's going to ask you a lot of questions financially. Like, hey, why do you spend three hundred dollars on Starbucks every month? Like, what are you doing? I got a friend who <laughs> I always get on her, and she'd be so mad. I'd be like, yeah, you know, you spend twelve dollars at the bagel place, and you know, you go there every day, and she, oh my god, I don't do nothing. Yeah, yes, yeah, you do, but it's okay though. We're, we're gonna talk through it, you know. Like, they help you look at some of your situations. You wanna know why? Because a lot of you with money completely suck. It is terrible. Like. Some of you guys literally make five grand and you spend five ten. You wanna know why? Because no one really coached you on a better way to handle your finances. And the entrepreneur will allow you to, because the first thing I'm gonna tell you to do is look at what you have been spending versus what you have been earning. And once you can identify those factors, I feel like everyone's better for it. Like they're like, oh my gosh, wow, I do spend two hundred dollars in a week at Starbucks. Oh my goodness, 
I do spend five thousand dollars at Victoria's Secret. Goodness gracious, I never would have knew. But that's the good thing about an entrepreneur. They're going to allow you to look deep in yourself, and that's the only thing they can honestly, honestly do. And the thing is, like, they're going to probably put some, you know, business opportunities in your face. Note, they're not going to hound you. If they're hounding you, they are not an entrepreneur. They're a salesperson. Entrepreneurs still can be salespeople, or salespeople can be entrepreneurs. Why? Because they may work for themselves. But entrepreneurs are trying to help benefit people from a business. Salespeople just want you to buy a product or a service. That's probably going to benefit them more than they benefit you. Remember that. But they're going to you know, promote and put out these business opportunities but they're not going to you know be on your back about them they're not going to it's hard to you know you bring a horse to water but you can't make them drink i can show you something but that doesn't mean you want to do it and if you don't want to do it it's okay like you'll see me work through it and then eventually you'll come around or you'll find something that you like and we'll grow together but hopefully the things that that entrepreneur you know mindset the dreamer has showed you has kind of opened your eyes to be like hey Maybe I should do something. Maybe I should do something better. And the thing is, like, they're also good to ask questions, like, about the world. Because a lot of stuff, like, you won't learn in school. They, why, like, in school, they teach you about why plants are green. But you want to be a marketer. Unless you're selling plants, I don't think that the fact that chlorophyll is in the plant actually makes a difference. I know I don't care. I don't need chlorophyll. I need the plants though, so I guess that kind of was sort of important. But it's like, again, like they're not teaching you things that really matters. But you ask an entrepreneur, like, they have to know about the changes in the business world or else they're probably going to fail. They need to know when the markets are up, know when the markets are down. They need to know when inflation is happening. They need to know what interest rates are, you know, happening. They, want, they need to know why inflation is occurring. They, want, they need to know about supply and demand. Like, they're going to be great resources as far as you know just trying to get an idea of like what's going on in the country like especially for those who are kind of stuck in that old age where they think um gold and silver are great uh hedges i guess they're kind of safe routes but those are people who are scared and for those who don't understand about digital money like the entrepreneurs are the ones who are going to complete consistently evolve with the world and if they don't then guess what? Those are the ones who fail. But the thing is, if you ask an entrepreneur or something and they don't know the answer, I guarantee if you wait about a week, even less than that, they'll probably have a better answer for you or a complete answer for you. Because like one thing that they do that we do, haha, is if we don't know something, immediately Google. Google. And I kind of hate when people ask simple questions that you really can just swipe on. It's like, hey, Google. Okay, Siri. Or hey, Siri. Okay, Google. You know, simple stuff, but they, they're just too, uh But great resources to understand what's going on in the world. Then we got the brute. The brute is brutally honest. Woo, woo. They hold nothing back when it comes to telling you something. I'm not going to lie. That be me sometimes because especially for, like, my friends who are very arrogant, you got to bring them down. You got to put some humility in their life and honestly being humble is one of the best things you can do have you ever found somebody who's like so high and mighty like especially some of these like <sighs> these athletes oh my god who like oh my gosh man i'm a dog i'm a i'm a ooh it's like you got two types you know where it's like hey i don't want to crush your spirit i don't want to talk bad about them because then i would feel like a bad friend <clears throat> and you always want to uplift somebody you always want to motivate them but it's one thing if somebody's feeling good but in, and feeling a, a little bit of confidence. You never kill their confidence, but you kill their arrogance. It's like, oh, my goodness, man, I'm a stunner, man. You can't do nothing with me. And it's like, hey, sir, hold on, because you are an average, borderline average player on a terrible team. Are you sure that you are good? Are you sure that you're the star that you're, you're thinking of? Like, people get one catch in the game, or they make one basket, and... There's been like eight games in the season, and they're finally the stud player. It's like, sir, hold on. Y'all were getting blown out by 30, and the coaches were just doing a rotation. So you got an opportunity to show what you can do against lesser opponents. That doesn't count. You know, but these are the ones that 
you need the people to be brutally honest because sometimes that actually helps build you up. So this person is going to be the one who's always 100 with you. They're probably not going to always be it because sometimes you got to evaluate the situation. Like if a person's always crying and sad, like you kind of get annoyed and you got to favor a little bit to what will kind of make them a little happier. But they're not the ones to lie to you. Like, completely lie to you. Like, they, they might exaggerate a little situation, but overall, it's going to be honest. For simple fact is, that's what you need. Some people will not be honest with you. They will not tell you the truth. They will, <laughs> what's the word, compulsively lie to you to make you feel better. Especially if they feel like, if you're immature and you're going to get mad at somebody who's giving you constructive criticism, you need to grow up. This is not okay. Especially for all y'all that's in your 20s and are entering the corporate world or entering life as it is. You better understand how life is, because life is a lie, but it's the truth. Because if you live by certain actions and you think things are okay and no one has the guts to tell you the truth, then guess what? You're probably going to get burned in this life because, again, things happen. But the thing is, too, like they won't sugarcoat nothing. Like They want to help you. And if you listen to the other one, my other podcast and the other radio show about the sweetener, then those are the ones who, you know, are going to share coat, are going to lighten the mood. But the brute, they're not. They're going to give it to you direct, give it to you clean. Why? Because that's going to help you. The brute wants to see you evolve. And the thing is, constructive criticism is really the, the only way. Because if you don't know what you're doing wrong, then you can't improve on it. If you're thinking you're just so high and mighty and so good or you're always in the right, then guess what? You're going to keep doing the same actions and you're not going to improve nothing you know if you're wrong they will let you know that you are wrong especially me like if you're if you're in the wrong i'm gonna tell you hey you're dead wrong i'm gonna look you right in your soul and let you know that because it is not okay for you to think that your these actions or activities that you're engaging in is acceptable especially the further you go out into you know the world because the worse you get the worse is going to be for your consequences later on so again be brutally honest sometimes. You know, you got to be real, real hard on them. And especially the arrogant ones. Like, it's been a few times where it's just like, you got to break them down. Because I hate arrogant people. Like, it's okay to be confident. But don't try to talk down on people and sound like you're just this, whoo, this guru or this, this, oh my gosh, I'm trying to think of good words. I don't want to say king or queen because we're all kings and queens in our own empires. But you, you get what I'm saying, like these, these emperors or these dictators or whatever, like they really feel like they control a lot. And it's like, you, you don't, you might control a lot in your particular area on your level, but that's what you do. So we're going to let that be. But I know a lot of us have encountered the athletes like that. That's like the first and like primary where it's like, so, or, like, or even like the ones for like my car lovers who be like, um, who see these people who get chargers and challengers and me personally like i don't care about your car i really don't you can talk a whole lot of crap go ahead i don't really care about your car but for one and for two it's the fact that most of them have v6s and those are the smaller engines for those big body uh vehicles and to me it, you just got a charger or a challenger just to say you have one like, if somebody asks you what's under your hood, nine times out of ten, they don't even know. They'd be like, uh, uh, the, the engine, you know, vroom, vroom. Like, oh, okay, okay, cool. I, I got vroom, vroom in my car, too. Like, that doesn't make any sense to me. Like, it, I, don't, I don't care. And the thing is, like, for those cars specifically, like, people care if you got V8s. Like, they want to see the SRTs. They want to see the um, Hellcats. Like, they want to see the Demons. They want to see those real cars who's going to put out that horsepower. You know that? The whole purpose of even, even owning one. The ones who got the V6s or even the um, Camaros that got the four-cylinders. It's like, really? You got... Okay, you just want to take pictures and have a high car note. So that's okay. That's cool. You do that. So the one thing, too, don't forget about the Brute, though. They will be honest, but they're not here to hurt your feelings. If they're hurting your feelings and they're dogging you, then they're not your friend. They're an enemy. A friend of me. Remember that. We talked about that. So pay attention to how they're speaking to you when they are giving you constructive criticism. And then we have Bobby. That's with the IE, not a Y. 
and Bob. And what are they? The builders. These are the ones who are here to motivate you. They're really here to help uplift you. You know, they want to see you at your best and they're going to help do what they can. So a lot of us, especially when we're trying to like accomplish our dreams, and our goals, like we're not broken, but we need a strong base. And some of us just don't have a strong base. And that's completely okay. Because again, especially those who are in like between the ages of 18 and 30, like we're still trying to learn and grow and figure out exactly what we want to do and how we want to get there. Some of us know way earlier than others. And some of us are still trying to, you know, figure it out. But that's what the builders are there for. They're helping you, you know, navigate. Like, all right, what do you want to do? All right, how are you going to get there? All right, what does it take to get to that position? Like, I ask my friends all the time. Like, my one friend, she said, oh, I want to get a house. Okay, well, what do you need? Well, I need money. <laughs> yeah, what else do you need? Like, they know the base stuff, but they don't know the other things. So it's like, okay, well, where are you trying to stay? Oh, well, I think, okay, cool. You need to figure out these locations. What are the requirements? What are their test scores? What money do you actually need to have? What is the bank's requirements? What banks are you trying to go to? Like, when I get into my friends who ask certain questions, like, I get on them. I want to know exactly everything that you're doing. For a simple fact is, I want to make sure that you're putting yourself in the right position. You got to make sure you know you're building correctly. Even my friends who have, like, some weird dreams where it's like, oh, my gosh, I want to be a bird. Like, oh, okay, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, oh, ooh, science, okay, cool, um, so let's, let's find you some feathers, okay, let me, let's see how you're gonna find that, um, let me call the X-Men and see if we can borrow their suit, you know, like, but still, you're still trying to give them some type of uh, help, give them idea, like, all right, this is what you need to do to find the, the next step to where you're trying to go, because overall, you know, they're trying to, they want to see you happy. But they want to make sure that you're doing the right things that's going to make you happy. Because you can see somebody happy, but they can still be sad. Or they can be happy, but they're not going nowhere. You know, the whole idea, if you want somebody happy and elevate, that's the what we're trying to get into, especially with the builder. And really, they're just going to ask the right questions. Again, like they're going to help to make sure that you're bettering yourself. So if you have that friend who's constantly asking questions when it comes to you trying to figure out what you want to do in your next steps, let them Unless they're, unless they're irritating, but let them, because they're the ones who are trying to make sure that you're putting the right foot forward to get to your goals. Because ultimately, they just want to see you get to where you want to go. So, to recap, the type of friends that from this episode that you want to talk about, the adventurer, you got the workout partner, you have the dreamer, remember, just the entrepreneur, you got Brute, which is the one who's brutally honest. And you have Bobby with the IE, not a Y. And Bob, who are the builders. They're the ones who are going to help motivate you.